Hi, we're going to go into chapter 8, which is on uh, friction, yeah? Okay, so from textbook, I'm referring to uh, page, page 401, yeah, from textbook. So we'll be only studying on characteristics of dry friction and problems that is involving dry friction, okay? Only dry friction. Okay, so what is the, do we have a wet friction? No, we don't have a wet friction, but we call that as drag, yeah? So dry friction is between surface and surface without any fluid in between, whereas drag is between um, surface and also fluid. So the fluid can be air or can be water, can be oil, can be anything. Example of a drag is when you have a car, yeah, when a car is actually moving, so we have drag, right? So this is not dry friction, yeah? So that is drag. So we're not going to look at uh, drag, we're only going to look at dry friction, yeah? So I'm going to uh, uh, guide you in how to draw the free body diagram, which is very important, and also to solve the problem, okay? Application of dry friction is literally everywhere in your life, yeah? like the braking system of your vehicle and then the slippers that you wear even your soul your foot also dry friction because your soul mm, is rough yeah that's the reason don't overdo your pedicure otherwise you slip and fall on any surface okay and then we also have uh, applications like if you want to push your fridge or pull your fridge yeah and so here i'm going to guide you how high must this cable be or how low must it be yeah will this fridge topple so all this is going to be guided in this chapter okay so friction is defined as force of resistance acting on a body which prevents yeah from slipping uh, of a body to a uh, second body okay what is slipping slipping means if you're in front of me in the classroom it's easy Slipping means like this, slip, slip, okay? Tipping means you have something surface and this would be tip, tip. Can you imagine the movement? This one will be just moving, sliding, yeah? Slipping is sliding. This one is just, it will it will fall off. It sort of like fall off, okay? If, if I were to draw the new box, it would be something like that, tip. This is called tipping, tipping, tipping. This is slipping so these are the two terms that i'll be using here so you have to understand yeah so experiment shows that frictional forces act, act, uh, act tangent parallel to the contact surface in the opposite direction of the relative motion of tendency of the motion so let's look at this diagram i'm going to enlarge here and i'm going to do a bit of scribbling here okay observe this this box is being pulled this side right Okay, because it's being pulled this side, there will be an opposing force. Can you see all this opposing force in this direction? Okay, and if you see, here will be more than this side, right? Okay, that's because the force is this side. If the force is in the opposite side, yeah, if the force happened to be this side, then the wider version will be here. Yeah, the movement will be something like this, like a trapezium. Okay, you understand or not? Yeah, so now we will observe something which is this side pulling of the material of this side yeah okay so if you if you you remember what i told you in the last class when you have something like this it's like a trapezium isn't it yeah? when you centralize it what happens this is one third right one third and this is half so when you combine both the normal force for this will be somewhere here do you understand what i'm saying you know yeah it will not be in the middle normal force will not be in the middle okay like in your in your physics class previous class and all this thing all how do you draw your normal your normal will always be this is the box and it's always in the middle yeah the weight is also uh yeah this is the weight and then you have your normal force in the middle yeah correct or not yeah this mostly you draw like this and then you draw like this right so this is your normal force this is your weight so this diagram is actually wrong yeah if you have friction it doesn't work this way it's wrong normal force never will be in the middle yeah normal force always will be shifted so the correct diagram is always like this normal force here or normal force can be here yeah depending depending on where is the pull okay 
You understand what I'm saying, yeah? But weight always in the middle, yeah? If it's a, if it's a evenly uh, balanced uh, equipment, yeah? Then the weight is in the middle, okay? So, now, you, now that you have understand why the normal force is actually shifted, yeah? Shifted here. So, if you take this magnified, this is the surface of the box, yeah? And this is the surface of the ground. If you magnify it, you will see normal uh, uh, friction, opposing friction, normal opposing friction. And the resultant will be inclined, okay? Will be inclined. This is your resultant. Later, we will be combining the resultant, yeah? So, just hold on to it. Now, you understand why the normal is shifted, yeah? Shifted, okay. Now, let's look at this. So, this is how you draw your free body diagram. Can you see, you know, your normal force? Yeah, now normal force is actually shifted. It is not in the middle, the same line with the weight. No, it's not there. It's not there. Please, do not draw something which is in the same line with the weight. That's wrong. Okay, because the pool is this side, the normal force is closer to this side. Okay, so the distance between the normal to the center, it's called the X, X distance. This X distance is so, so important because if the X, I'm going to magnify this again. Okay, let me just show you. Okay, can you see the X? Yeah, this X distance is very, very important. If the normal force from your calculation is shifted, shifted outside, okay, it's more than half of the length of the box, yeah? So, what will happen? It means this whole box will tip off, will tip off. You understand it? Yeah? Okay, so it's very, very important to ensure that the normal force is always within the range of X. It's within the range of half the length of the box. Okay, so the X distance is very important to be within the X over uh, this half, half the distance. If it's outside, it will tip. Or if it's even at the at this, at this point here, yeah, the distance X equals to 2, it will be about to tip okay about to tip okay what happens in the case that if it's at the back here wow that's very safe yeah if the normal force if you calculate and then you get your x as negative right because this is the point the reference point that you're taking so anything this side is positive anything behind here is negative if let's say you get a negative value it means the box is so stable it may slip but it will never ever tip yeah never ever so remember that yeah, that is very important point here yeah so the x value must always be within must always be within the uh, the half of the distance yeah must always be within this range yeah never exit exit it will tip okay what about slipping does is slipping value being affected by the x no nothing to do it only affects the tipping for slipping Okay, whether the box slips or not is depending on whether this p-value is greater than the friction value. Okay, I'm going to show you an example shortly. Then you will understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, so with that, I hope you understand. If you don't understand, you can just contact me. Yeah, so we are done with the slide. Okay, okay, to study the characteristics of the friction force, let's just assume that the tipping does not occur. Yeah, we don't look at the tipping. So we are, we are keeping the end within this range here. Okay, so we gradually increase the magnitude of the P, okay? Like example, you have a box, okay, this is you. You are now pushing the box, you're pushing the box. You push, you start pushing, yeah? So I'm going to draw graphical movement of you pushing the box. You are pushing, it's not moving. You're pushing even harder. Oh, it's not moving. You push even harder, not moving. Push even harder. You push to the maximum of where the energy that you have. And then the box start moving. Once it start moving, you will feel that, oh, it's so easy. It needs lesser energy to push, isn't it? Okay. So, this is the range of, this is a very important range. Okay. This range represents the uh, static kinetic, static, yeah, Fs. And this range will be the kinetic movement, the kinetic friction. And this is the static friction. Okay. So, this is the uh, difference. Okay. You must uh, understand this. This is very, very important. So, at all cases, static friction will always be greater than your kinetic friction. Yeah? It always will be greater. Okay? So, once again, can you see? The N. The N is actually 
shifted because the P is here. So if the P is in the opposite side, the N will be somewhere around here. Yeah, so that's how the drawing is done. Okay, now let me just continue here. The maximum friction is attained just before the block begins to move. That's called the impending motion. So where is the impending motion? It's just about to move here. It's just about to move. Yeah. The value of the force is found to be Fs equals to mu s. Mu s is actually the coefficient of friction, static. So we have got two coefficients. One is the mu s and one is the mu k. So mu s is for static, mu k is for the kinetic. Yeah. At all cases, uh, a mu k will always be lesser than mu s. Yeah. So mu s is st a static. Uh, coefficient uh, static uh, friction coefficient of static friction yeah and then it also depends strongly on the materials that is in contact yeah it depends yeah on the material that's contact okay uh, so okay once it's motion can you see it is f k okay f k okay now it is also very important to note that the friction may be less then the maximum friction force. So it's just because the object is not moving. Don't assume the friction force is at the maximum. Unless you are told that the motion is impending. Okay. Because you don't know. You don't know whether your Fs is here, Fs is here, Fs is here, Fs is here. So the Fs maximum is here. Until you attain the maximum and you get the object moving. You will never know. Yeah. What is the maximum value? That's what the text is actually trying to explain. Yeah. So next. Determine the mu s experimentally. You remember the experiments that you did in the lab? So this is where you determine the mu s. Yeah, you are good at it, right? You added you the 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 table was like this, and then there is a thing string, and then this thing. You added weight here. You keep on adding weight. You keep on adding weight. Then this object will start moving, right? Ah, so that is how you determine the mu s. Okay, okay. That's when the block is in the verge of sliding. Then the normal force and the frictional force combine to create the result okay this is like your fx and fy isn't it now if tilted this way you understand better okay fx fy how do you find the resultant you use your Pythagoras theorem isn't it to find the resultant now this whole thing is tilted so that's how you find your resultant so what is the angle angle of theta s theta s is here okay it is fs over n yeah okay that's tangent okay that's done next slide Okay, what happens if the block is on an inclined surface? This is very common, uh, exam question, very common. It's tilted. Okay, tilted. So, when it's tilted, what do you do? Okay, weight component comes in. Okay, can you see that? Weight uh, W cos theta. So, easier for you to always keep uh, keep your, even your angle, uh, what do you call your plane tilted. Yeah. So, in this case, instead of drawing straight like this, okay, you draw it tilted this way. So this is your Fy and this is your Fx. Yeah, tilted. You understand or not? Yeah. Okay, so if you look at your Fy, yeah, close armpit, W cos theta. And then we have the normal force here. So normal minus W cos. What are Fx? Fx in this direction. Uh, okay, mu s n, we have that positive and then opposing. Okay, so this is W cos. So the opposite side will be W sine. Okay, so when you drop this force is moving this side, right? So that's why it is negative. Yeah, using, using these two equations, so what we get? Mu s is W sine s uh, over W cos s. That's how you prove that it is tangent delta, uh, 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 yeah, tangent uh, theta s. Yeah, okay. So, problems involving dry friction. So, what are the steps involved? First is to draw the necessary free body diagram. That is so important. This has got marks now. Please do not forget to draw free body diagram. It's really, really very important. Yeah. Okay. Uh, determine the number of unknowns. Do not assume that Fs, uh, unless it's impending, unless they give you. Yeah. Then you apply the e equation of equilibrium. You know your Fy. Yeah. Mm, equals to positive. Uh, okay. Fx fx equals to 0, fy equals to 0. So, you apply this equation in the um, question, okay? So, now I'm going to move on to what is sipping, uh, uh, slipping and tipping. Now, remember, yeah, what I told you about slipping and tipping? Tipping is if this thing tap, falls this way. 
Slipping if this thing moves, slides. Yeah, another word for slipping is actually slides. Okay, let's look at this, yeah. For, uh, there's a very good explanation in the textbook, yeah. You can just look at textbook page, uh, okay. Oops. Oh, the old book has it. The new book, they have removed it, yeah. Okay, anyway, it's okay. I will just explain to you. Okay, observe this. For a given W and a H, so height, huh? H, H, height. Uh, how can we determine if the block will slide or tip first? Okay. In this case, we have four unknowns. Okay. So, we have uh, weight, we have uh, P, we have the X value and the N value. Okay. Now, hence, uh, we have to make an assumption to give us another equation. Okay. The friction equation. Then, we can solve for the unknowns using the Three equi uh, equation of equilibrium. Finally, we need to check the assumption is correct or not. So remember, the most important key point is actually the x. <clears throat> if the x is greater than half of this, then the box will tip. Do not worry so much. I'm going to show you an example shortly. Okay, you will understand even better. So this is a summary. Okay, how does the slip slipping occurs? Okay, known is f equals to mu s n. So you solve for this, okay? Check if uh, check if uh, x is actually uh, is in between, okay? If it's between uh, zero to b over two, or even if it's negative, no problem. Yeah, it's very safe. It will never uh, tip, but it may slip. Yeah, because slip actually occurs <clears throat> if the friction or is with a with a pull is the same or greater. If the push is greater than the friction, then the slipping will occur. Whereas for this, tipping, tipping will occur if the x value is uh, greater, greater than b over 2. Yeah, so that's why they say if known as x equals to b over 2 or greater, then you will get the tipping, the, the block will fall off. Okay, so that's how uh, thing works. Okay, so let's solve an example. Okay, I'm going to solve the example from the textbook. Literally, these examples you can just go through by yourself yeah it's uh it's very very uh easy you can just go through by yourself i've actually provided you the slides so you can just do it by yourself yeah so i'm going to explain to you uh two examples here 8.1 and 8.2 yeah and then i will give you some homework yeah okay let's move on to uh, the example itself Okay, this is the first part that I wanted to explain to you. Remember, yeah, I'm just repeating. You have the push and then you have, because of that, you have something forming like a trapezium. That's the reason why the normal force is actually shifted, shifted to the right rather than being in the middle. Okay, that part you can understand. Okay, let's look at this question. Okay, the crate uniform has a mass of 20 kilograms. If the force P, 80, 80 is applied and mu S is 0 0.3, so this is the original diagram. So this is what you have to draw in your uh, test or your final exam or whatever that you are answering assessment, free body diagram. Now remember the weight, the weight comes from 20 times 9.81. Okay. And then we have the NC. Just draw with the distance of X. You don't know what's the distance. So it's okay. Okay. And then we have the P, 80. That's given in the question. 30 is given in the question. Okay. Next. Your fx equals to 0. So, what do you have for fx? fx. We have the f here. Okay, which is the friction. Okay. Uh, minus because it's going in the opposite direction. And then we have 80 cos 30. This one, yeah, close armpit, you drop. 80 cos 30. That's one equation. Yeah, where you can solve for your f ready. Because you have the value. Next, we do for your fy. We have uh, pointing uh, down negative all pointing down is negative and this 80 you resolve it making upright also negative and then we have nc which is pointing upward which is positive so you calculate you get 236.2 so this is not the end of it you have your f you have your uh you have your f you have your nc but you do not have your x right so you need to actually calculate for your x okay so how do you calculate for your x so what we have here we take moment so where do you want to take moment you can take moment at point O. Okay. If you take moment at point O, 196 
196 multiply 0. That's the reason why they didn't even write here. And C multiply X going on this side, right? Clockwise, uh, anti-clockwise, so that's positive. Okay, and then we have your 80, 80 upright, huh? 80 upright, yeah, which is 80 uh, sine 30, sine 30, going around this side, which is also, uh, po uh, no, which is positive, because it's anti-clockwise. And then we have 80 cos 30, which is uh, slipping this way, it goes this side, which is negative. So from here, you get a distance of x. Oops, did you make a mistake? Yeah, uh oh how did the x value become negative? What does it mean by x negative? It means this nc is supposed not to be drawn here, but it's supposed to be drawn behind. Yeah, which means if since x is negative, it indicates that the resultant normal forces is slightly to the left of the crate center line. No tipping will occur. It's so safe. Because why? The x is so less, so much lesser than 0 0.4. Also, the maximum frictional force developed by the surface is actually how much? Uh, maximum friction is mu s multiplied with n, which is 70.9. Yeah, 70.9. Your maximum friction is 70.9. 70.9. But the friction that you have calculated here is 69.3. So, will this box slide? No, it will not slide or it will not slip. That is the term that they use. Do not use sli uh, slide, yeah? Use slip, okay? Because it is lesser than the maximum friction, yeah? So that is how you calculate, uh, you, you do this, uh, this question. So I'm going to also copy paste another question, the uh, uh, seven point. Okay, let me see. This is the textbook. You have a copy of the textbook as well. Yeah. That was the example that I did. Okay. Now, this example is actually in the feed. So, let's ignore the feed part. Yeah. We just uh, pick the, the numbers. Yeah. We just look at the numbers, look at the concept. Yeah. Uh, you have your textbook. In your textbook, it is actually in SI. So, you know, the most important is the explanation and understanding it. So, just observe here. Yeah? Okay. I go through very fast. Yeah. Okay. So, we have what? We have a bit of a dump truck uh it's observed that the bed of the dump truck is raised to angle 25 the vending machine will begin to slide okay so the static coefficient friction between the vending machine and surface of the truck bed so determine the static friction yeah mu s yeah. okay let's draw the uh vending machine so what we have is like this and tilted at 25 yeah and one second okay so what else information that's given? Okay. Oh, so, oh, sorry. This is the, the, the drawing that they give. Yeah. Not that you draw. This is what you draw. Okay. You, so, you have a weight component. You have a normal force and you have your uh, friction force. 2.5 feet, 1.5, 1.5. So, you start begin to uh, calculate. So, once again, this time your angle is actually tilted. Yeah. Your angle, uh, your axis is tilted. So, this is how you keep your Fy and this is how you keep your Fx, okay? Fx positive, so you have W sine 25 minus with F and then we have Fy and W cos 20, 25, you know that, right? Okay, Fy is up here, so this is pointing down, this is pointing up and then you have Fx, this is pointing this side and this will be pointing on the opposite side. I think you are aware of this, okay? So, that's done. Okay, now you can't solve right of course you can't solve so the next part is to take moment at o so you take moment at o look at this o they have actually shifted behind here can you see that yeah you can do that you can do right in the middle or you can be shifting it behind no problem you know you can do whatever but as long as you get you understand what you're doing okay so in this case they have actually done the uh point o behind here okay the previous example the point o was in the middle yeah so uh, moment at o is zero so you, we have w sine 25 uh, the slipping one here this side the distance is 2.5 feet and then we have w cos 25 we have the distance of x yeah so that's the reason why they actually shifted the o at the back yeah because they want the value of x here so from here solving it all simultaneously so what you get your mu s 
uh, is actually 0 0.466. Okay, so when you get your mu s, uh, so the question is actually asking you to calculate the mu s which you have done. Okay, that's it. Uh, mu s, static friction between R. Yes, that's all. Okay, so the angle theta 25 is referred to the angle of repose. And by comparison, it is equal to the angle of static friction. Okay, notice from calculation that theta is independent of the weight of the vending machine. Yeah, and so theta provides a conven convenient method for determining the coefficient of static friction. So in this case, the x value, if you plug in inside, and you will get the x value is actually 1.17 feet. So 1.17 feet is actually lesser than uh, lesser than 1.5. So what does it mean in this case? Will the um, uh, uh, will it tip? Will it tip not? You see the n value is inside here, right? Inside within the range. So my question is, will it tip? Will it tip or not? Of course, no. Huh? It will never tip. Yeah, it will never tip because it is within the 1.5 range but yes it will slip yeah it will slip okay so with that i'm ending uh first part of chapter 8 itself if you have any question you just do uh buzz me or contact me yeah okay do up your homework